Let us join together in the opening. We will cast our burdens upon the Lord, and He will sustain us. He will never permit the righteous to be moved, and we will trust in Him. Be merciful to us, O God, for in You our souls take refuge. In the shadow of Your wings we will take refuge, till the storms of destruction pass by. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Hello, thank you for joining us at the, the St. Paul, July 5th, Independence Day weekend, COVID service, and our COVID video service, actually, and I'm thankful that I could be here. We have a special guest here with us today as well, Vicar Peter DeBerney is uh, going to be preaching today, so you get a week off without having to hear me. So consider yourself blessed. Peter is starting his, officially starting his vicarage August 1st in Long Island, New York. But uh, in the Missouri Synod, the Lutheran Church, once you complete your second year, you begin your year of vicarage. And Peter has completed his second year at St. Louis Concordia Seminary, and he is now a vicar for all intents and purposes. So Vicar DeBernie will be preaching for us today on our video in all three services and that are live and also in our Monday evening service here. So thank you for, uh, for watching. And uh, for those of you who are still just a little concerned about being here, this is our fourth week now and uh, nobody's been sick. Everybody's stayed healthy. And we're doing everything we possibly can to keep you safe and to keep you healthy as well if you are here. So come, come with no worries. We're going to begin our worship this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us draw near with an open heart and confess our sins to God our Father. We implore our Savior to save us from ourselves. Confession has two parts. First, that we confess our sins, and second, that we receive absolution, that is forgiveness from the pastor as God himself, not doubting, but firmly believing that by it our sins are forgiven before God in heaven. We believe. Let us then empty our hearts of our miserable failures. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. And we justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 11th chapter. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Together, let us join in the gospel response. Come unto me, ye weary, and I will give you rest. O blessed voice of Jesus, 
which comes to hearts oppressed. It tells of benediction, of pardon, grace, and peace, of joy that hath no ending, of love that cannot cease. The Apostles' Creed I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We are all anxious and fearful of something in life. Something. What are you fearful of? Now, the obvious option here presenting is the COVID pandemic. causes a lot of fear and anxiety in people. Worried that maybe a member of my family will be sick, or I will get sick, or the world will never be the same. Or even just talking and thinking about it may stir up feelings of anxiety. And even if you're one of the brave, brave ones, corona doesn't scare me, surely there is still something in life that you're fearful and anxious of. I'm calling you to dive deep, think deeply what that possibly could be. Is it really something about your health? Is it the fear of failure, of failing in your education, your job, of failing as a parent, a spouse? Is it fear of things happening with money, of retirement funds going down the tubes? The stocks have not been doing too hot lately. Are you afraid of being disapproved of by others, being unhappy in life? Yesterday was July 4th. And thanks be to God that we live in the country that we do, given the freedoms that we have, and we are being served by the people that are fulfilling their God-given vocations to give us those freedoms. It's truly a blessing. That all being said, does worry and anxiety fill your heart when you wonder, where is this country headed to? People are being voted into office or not being voted into office that are directing the country in ways that clash with my ideals, with my morals. What's going to happen in the next couple generations? Can fear and anxiety fill your heart about that? Are you afraid of losing control? Are you afraid of loneliness? Worried about abandonment? Will anyone love me? There are many, many different things to be worried about and anxious about, surely. And we have God's grace, and we cling to that. Yet how easy it is to be restless in this life. My message for you today is this. Perhaps it is this acknowledgement and realization of our anxiety and fear that is the first step toward true rest and peace. That sounds pretty good. Let's dive into the scriptures. In our gospel lesson, Jesus gives thanks to his Father who is in heaven for hiding his identity and what he has come on earth to do from the wise and understanding, but revealing these things to the little children and infants. Now, in first reading this, this seems really strange. Wouldn't someone who's wise recognize and follow Jesus? And babies, babies, they often wander on their own and get into all sorts of mischief. A couple days ago, I was visiting a couple who have a one-year-old child. And on a couple occasions, they asked me if I could watch over their child for a few moments, of which I happily obliged. And during some of those moments, they were some of the most fascinating moments of 
my time there because I got to see this baby get into all sorts of trouble. First, he would wander around the house aimless, and the second he went off into a different room where I wasn't, he would cry out for help, unaware where I had gone. Sometimes he would grab things off the floor and whack them into the ground. He attempted to do that with my laptop, to take my laptop and try to, la to whack it into the ground. I caught him just in time, but that was anxiety-inducing, let me tell you. Sometimes he would go to the cabinets, open the cabinets up, take something out, stick it in his mouth, and then throw it away. All the cabinets were almost empty by the time I had to attempt to clean them up. Babies aren't exactly geniuses. And if there was poison on the ground in front of them, they would stuff it in their mouths. They're weak and incapable. Who in today's society wants to be known as a baby? If someone said, you think like a child, generally that means you're naive. If someone calls me small-minded, that's not a compliment, but rather referring that I might be dumb. And how many times have we been told, don't be such a baby, when we're scared or anxious? It would seem to me that being wise and understanding would be better than being like a little child. Yet Jesus says it's to these little children that the Father reveals salvation. Huh. In our context, when we read wise and understanding, Jesus refer is referring to those who are blinded by their own beliefs that they can be self-sufficient with no need to repent. Think of it like with this attitude. Wow, I'm so wise and enlightened. I don't need anyone's help to live. I have my own sense of direction. I don't need God. It's that attitude that Jesus thanks the Father for hiding the ways of salvation. To the world, that may seem wise to free yourselves from dependency to religion or other people, but it's with great irony that God gives the greatest gift of all to fools by comparison. To those who are the most weak, the most frail, the most lost in sin, the most afraid and anxious, those who are hopeless, it is to them that the Holy Spirit reveals to them a desperate need for someone to come find them, to know them, to love them, to comfort them. It is these hopeless, frightened little children that our God gives salvation. Therefore, brothers and sisters, it is true wisdom, not wisdom of the world, but true wisdom that you and I know that we are lost and fearful on our own. We are desperate for a savior, just as a kiddo might be desperate for the care and comfort of a parent. And while fear and anxiety were never part of God's original plan, and soon they will be destroyed forever, maybe it is our anxiety in this life that is the first step toward true rest and peace. Again, I am asking you to dive deep into yourself, find what you are afraid of, and pray that the Holy Spirit reveal in you a deep need and desire for a Savior. I could tell you never to be fearful or anxious again. And our Lord Jesus encourages us to run from fear, as he says in John 14, let not your hearts be troubled, neither be afraid. And God's grace comforts us through life so we don't have to be anxious or fearful. Yet we are broken people, aren't we? Anxiety is everywhere. It floods our thoughts and our actions. We take comfort in the rest that our Lord gives but when anxiety comes, and it will come, we can use that anxiety as an opportunity to see a desperate need for a Savior, to direct our eyes toward Jesus. 
knowing that like an infant desperate for a parent, we become desperate for him. Now there's more to this passage. We talked, I just talked about the rest that the Lord gives. Well, what is this rest? Jesus goes further to say, Come to me all who are labor and are who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now we know, we just discussed that our fear and our anxiety can remove the pretense of self-sufficiency from us and make us desperate for a savior that we surely need. The Holy Spirit directs our eyes and we see Jesus. And Jesus doesn't go, ooh, too much sin for me. You're anxious and fearful too much. No, he doesn't do that at all. He doesn't focus on our fears or our failures for courage. Instead, he offers a rest to all who come to him. But again, what is this rest? Jesus tells us to take his yoke upon us. And do you know what a yoke is? It's a big wooden beam that two oxen carry, so they are put together so they can carry forward a plow or a load. And having a big wooden block on your back doesn't sound very restful at all. It sounds heavy and hard. And it's true. Being a disciple of Jesus is hard. There's so many things we have to do differently. That oh-so-sweet temptation to sin we're bombarded with. Constantly, And while in this church we say flee from sin, the second we leave those doors, the opposite message is swarmed into our face. The world tells us to indulge, to reject God, and don't feel guilty to repent. There's no need. To resist these voices is hard. We're called to preach the gospel by God. That is part of the yoke that we bear, but we will be rejected. We may stretch out the hand in which we tell of the good news and hope of Jesus, only to be slapped away. Who likes to be rejected? And we'll be mocked. Remember, to the world, we think like children. We don't embrace the the ideals for self-sufficiency, for independency, no need for God. We are small-minded because we Preach and teach this blanket of dependency on God. And to the world, that is utter foolishness. But we say, yes, I am a little child, dependent on my Lord. That is the only way to salvation. With all these difficulties of this yoke, we remember that the Lord's yoke is light. Because what is the alternative? The alternative is the yoke of the world, finding ways to hide from worry and anxiety until death. No hope. Misery and despair comes when we realize we can't hide. And some of us have a good good ability to hide from fear and anxiety than others through busyness, relationships, drugs, what have it. But these burdens never go away. The yoke of Jesus is light, Because despite being surrounded by fear and anxiety, we have hope in God's saving grace. Let me illustrate this point with a story. A couple weeks ago, my family and I were out walking on a long trail at a state park, surrounded by nature. It was a great walk. And it was great until all of a sudden I noticed that my feet started to ache. And with every increasing step, or every other step, the pain would increase and increase and increase. It felt as if my body was falling apart as I kept walking down the road. And as some people older than me have told me, this is only the beginning. Well, while I was walking, the agony started increasing, and I was in the middle of the woods, unaware how much longer I would have to go. And finally, when we got out of the trail, we got out, and all of a sudden, we weren't where we started, and we just saw a paved road. 
And so we had to go even further. I had no idea how far away we were. Feet in agony. And now we're on pavement. And pavement hurts a lot more than dirt. Well, after a point, we turned the corner and we saw a joyous sight. We saw the original place in which we parked the car, still a distance off, and I was still in agony. Those steps I took as I saw that parking lot, but I saw it. I knew it was coming. And when I finally got to that car and sat down, my feet were throbbing, but I finally had relief. Brothers and sisters, hear the truth. Following Jesus can be hard, but we see the goal. While some people suffer and are lost in the middle of the woods, filled with pain and fear, with no end in sight, we see that parking lot. We know the goal. We know the target. We know that at the end of life, we have a rest that never ends. Paradise with our Lord. Better than the greatest night's sleep you've ever received. And we have the hope in what Jesus has done for us. That he died on the cross for all our sins. That he rose again so that we too could rise with him in new life. And that he has revealed this to you. He has not turned your back. He's not turned his back on you because of your anxiety and fear. Rather, our Lord says that it is his great will to reveal his salvation to those who are anxious, to those who are frail, and to those who are fearful. So finally, brothers and sisters, take up your your yoke and be his disciple. A disciple shaped by the true rest that we look forward to. Do not live as someone who is hopeless because you're not. Live as someone who has hope in the big picture. We rise and face our fear and anxiety, lifting it up from the darkest places of our hearts and prayerfully putting them in the hands of Jesus. We pray morning, we pray evening, we pray when anxiety fills our hearts. Be strong, be faithful, be courageous in an anxious world. Proclaim your hope to others who are lost. Care with gentleness And be empathetic because you know the fear that you have. You can reach out to those also who are fearful and anxious and care for those who have bought into the wisdom of the world instead of the wisdom of Christ with patience, ever prayerful that the Holy Spirit will reveal to them the desperate childlike need for a Savior. And do not fear rejection. For our Lord Jesus says that those who are rejected for his name will truly be blessed. Hunger after your Savior, whose yoke is light. Hunger after your God, who by Christ's death and resurrection takes you into his family. And come back next Sunday to be strengthened and reminded of the rest we look forward to once again. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we come before you once again with grateful and thankful hearts, grateful and thankful for the blessings that you will shower upon us on a daily basis, blessings too numerous for us to count, too numerous for us to even remember, and we are so very grateful that your grace is new to us, your mercy is new to us every single day. So Heavenly Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we gather and we ask that you would lift up all those who are not able to to be with us this weekend. Those who are not able to, to come into these doors because of sickness, because of illness, because they are in healthcare facilities, because of whatever reason, because they're just a fear yet of coming together. And we pray that you would alleviate the fears, that you would provide healing and comfort and protection for all of us as we gather here in your sanctuary in the name of your son. I mean, Father, we lift up all those who are serving in our armed forces, servicemen and women everywhere around the world. We ask your blessing upon those who are first responders, those in law enforcement, fire services, and emergency medical services. 
In the same way, we love to follow those on the front lines of the pandemic. Doctors, nurses, all the healthcare professionals who are serving their fellow man. We are grateful for their service. Father, we ask that you would protect them in all that they do. Father, we thank you for uh, Vicar Peter DeBernie here today. He was going to uh, share uh, a wonderful message of gospel here with, uh, with you. And uh, we, every time Peter preaches here, it is indeed a blessing to this congregation. So today, uh, you get to, we get to see it live, and you get to see it recorded as well from wherever you are. So thank you, Lord, for providing uh, Peter and Vicar DeBernie to us. Heavenly Father, again, in all things, we give thanks and praise to you for all the blessings in our lives. And Father, we thank you also for the video that we are all seeing today. We thank you for uh, the message that we are receiving in that video today. And Heavenly Father, we give thanks and praise to you for everything, the way you are making it work here at St. Paul. You are a loving God. And Father, we give you thanks and praise for everything in Jesus' name. Amen. Please join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now until we meet again, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Praise be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless America.